recording, I guess. I guess I should introduce. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Why Works not? For Works for me. Works for me too. Um, welcome to, I think this is the fucking 18th episode of this podcast. Wow. Woo! <laughs> Woo. We've been doing it for a while, holy crap. Yes. I don't know why people listen to this. There's better podcasts out there. <laughs> yep. Rip. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. So how's that uh, quarantine for you? Um, I guess I'll start. Um, nothing, nothing's too crazy. Uh, where we are, just all the essential businesses are shut down. My work is still open, but they've just limited everybody's hours and I'm still getting compensated for my hours being cut. So that's really quite nice. So I've just been, you know, working on personal projects and, uh, catching up on books and shows and, and all that. Um, so it's been it's been actually quite nice, quite peaceful. Nothing really crazy. It just uh, sucks I can't hang out with my homies. But uh, the benefit we're of not that your homies. Is... Yeah. No, you guys are my freaking homies, but I mean like in person. Fucking try it. Um, I was I was I, I was literally oh my god I was literally gonna segue. I said the benefit of it. The benefit of it is I've been um, connecting a lot more with online people as well as people who I haven't like talked to in years from like my old days of playing video games like Minecraft and stuff way back when or uh, people that I used to know in high school that uh, I haven't talked to since but since we're all quarantined or all we got our hours cut or our works our jobs are shut down uh, everybody's got nothing else better to do than play games with each other and connect with the people that they used to talk to and uh yeah it's actually really quite nice i've talked to people that i haven't talked to in almost six years and they're so much more uh mature and everything because you know when i was back in high school we were we were all just a bunch of uh silly silly teenagers right but now we're all adults and it's uh it's really quite nice catching up with these people and seeing how much they've changed and it's really quite nice it's been been a really nice time i've just spent my quarantine time playing video games and watching hentai I've well, yeah, of course, there's that too, but I'm trying to focus yeah. on the positive here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying hentai isn't a positive, right? That's it. We're going to well, fight to the death right yeah. now, Henry. Oh, God, oh, fuck. I mean, I, I, I'm good. I mean, I've got my new phone, uh, and I'm just playing a bunch of PC games. There you go. I've uh, been playing Doom Eternal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which we're not going to talk about on this podcast. Oh, God. Oh, it. That's fair. It, I'm doing a video on it, and I don't repeat the same stuff. All right, so, works for yeah. me. All right, thank you. All right, so, um, yeah, that, thank you for that, Henry. Mm-hmm. All right, so now, questions from tweets. We got a You're bunch, right. not as many as before, but we still got quite a few. Okay, so, cool. Yes, Spaggy, it's very cool. You know what else is cool? Um, my waifu. No, sub-zero temperatures. Okay. I'm suffering. Also, your waifu is in hell, so she'd be very, you know, boiling in terms of heat. And uh, also, she sucks. Um, so Actually, no, my waifu is in a very cool place, because if I go down there, that means I can actually go and meet uh, Doomslayer. And Doomslayer will kill you. So he kills disabled people. That's pretty fucked up. Jesus. I think he kills all people equally. No, he just kills demons. He's like Dante. Uh, he's, he's, oh, yeah, he's all about, he's he's all about that equality. Doom guy is... <laughs> he fights for trans rights. There you go. Doom, guy supports, awesome, gay, Doom guy supports gay rights. He doesn't support waifu rights all of a sudden. No, to be honest, I think Doom Guy would support all that because Doom Guy, like in his off time, as we've discovered by Doom Eternal, he's just a pretty chill guy. So Except I'm pretty when sh- he screams and goes rip and tear. No, no. In there's a speaking of Doom Eternal, there's an Easter egg where you can find like his own personal like um, dorm, and he just plays video games in his spare time and reads literature. He's a gamer. He's a gamer, yeah. fellows. He, he, in in his spare time, he's just like the most chill dude ever. So you know. There you go. Anyway, moving on from that, on to the actual questions. We got uh, four from Razel MP. Oh, oh my. 
All right. So, first question: movies that, despite the hype, didn't live up to your expectations. Uh, the last few Terminator films. <laughs> Why would you be hyped for them? They're all terrible. Uh, Apart well, from the first two. Uh, like, ter Terminator 3, I was like, oh shit, it's Terminator 3. I like Terminator 2, that was pretty rad. And then it was like, oh. And then it was like, oh, okay, maybe the next one's gonna be good. Okay. No. Evidently not. And then it's like, okay, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Third time's a charm, you know? Third nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so I haven't even seen Doc Fate. I, I I saw I haven't seen the new one no um I haven't really bothered because I heard it was like really bad. It probably is. I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's that's rough. Um, for my choice movie that I was ex didn't live up to expectations despite hype. Um, um, X Men Three. Oh, okay. That's not a bad... That's not a bad thing. Mm. Yeah. N enough said about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's your no, choice, basically... Baggy? Oh, sorry, what are you going to say, Howdy? Oh, no, 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 sorry, you you go, you go. <laughs> Alright, Baggy, what are you going to say? Oh, I'm going to piss off some people with my free choices. No, you only get right. one choice. Oh, one choice. Fine, we'll do um... three choices for you. Oh, sorry. I mean, um... you are special needs. Shut up. This, this, is, this is gonna be I'm shaking in my boots. Nah, I, I'm good. This is gonna piss people off. Uh, the first Avengers movie. I hate it. Interesting. <laughs> I hate that's, the first Avengers valid. movie. Um, Baggy, obviously, uh, you're on, you're on thin know. ice. Be careful where you walk next. Oh shush. Um, obviously, the hype was obviously with all these characters that we knew over the five years at that time. Uh, coming together that was really exciting and then when i watched it i hated it i just hated it um ultron was better infinity <laughs> war was a little bit better and then Vigil. endgame just basically just like it was like possible. it was probably the best out of all of the avengers movies i disagree infinity war was better um fair enough um so yeah all right what's your second choice then you're on thin ice be careful where you walk no, we're gonna do one like like. No, you said you had three. Oh, I thought. I'm sorry. I miss. I I misheard. I thought we had three. This is fucking wild. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, uh, okay. Right, let's just move on. Okay, so there you go. So Avengers, X Men Three, and Terminator. All right. Works for me. All right. Um, question number two: favorite Mortal Kombat character and why? This is an easy one: Scorpion and Sub Zero. Oh god, hang on. Uh, you can't same. have a Mortal Kombat game without them. Hang on, I gotta look at all of them. This is so... Oh, fuck. Yeah, fuck. This is gonna be... This is gonna take a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess... I guess Scorpion. He's pretty rad. He's alright. Because there's, there's such a huge cast of characters. It's gonna take a while to choose. And he's one of the most iconic characters. So yeah, I'd, I'd, it's pretty much the same answer. I guess it's like, um, oh, what's his, what's his name? Oh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the one guy, he has the, like, sword hat, razor sharp sword oh, hat. Uh, oh, Genshi, fuck, Genshi. Um... No, that, that was a different guy, he's the guy with the sword. Oh, shit. There's so many uh, Mortal Kombat characters. Yeah, there is. Yeah. What's your favorite, Beggy? Um, Sub-Zero, uh, Raiden, or Raiden, whatever, and then Baraka. Baraka, because I love spamming the shit out of the sword attacks um and uh, raiden and sub-zero because they're just awesome do you like scorpion like uh, oh, of course i like scorpion but if if you were to say which ones i main um it would be uh the uh, the three that i picked all right so yeah all right then next question question number three black mesa 1.0 was released a month ago your thoughts i have not played it me neither. I want to though. It's uh yeah, it's on my to do list. Like, I uh I have so many games on my to do list, and kind of bringing it back to the first question of the whole quarantine, I've been just playing a bunch of games that I've been meaning to play. Um, and uh, Black Mesa is one of them. And uh, yeah, I I've seen gameplay of the Zen area, and it looks fucking fantastic. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really excited to play play it. But uh, yeah. I really want to get it to be honest, because um, yeah, it just it, it looks 
nicer, even though I do like old graphics, you know, lots of bits. It just looks more visually appealing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it, one of the it, biggest regrets with the original Half Life was then. Yeah. Um, Fifteen pounds ain't bad either for a remake. So, yeah. you know, I'll get it though. It was in development longer than the original Half Life. I know it's been. Hasn't it been like in development since like 2010 or something like that? Something 2005. Like that, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, they were disappointed by the release of Half Life Source because they were expecting it to be like basically Half Life One, but with like Half Life Two type of graphics. It wasn't. So they were disappointed, and they went and remade the whole game. And Valve approved it. Yes. In fact, actually, one of the level designers from the original Half-Life said he'd rather play Black Mesa over the original. True. Oh. I mean, that's, fair that's, enough. That's, that's fighting words, boy. I yeah, disagree. What, a, what an honor that would be, though, to be a developer and have somebody say that about your game. That was actually the same thing with Resident Evil 2 Remake. Is actually um, There was originally going to be a mod for the original Resident Evil 2, or like one of the Resident Evil games... Uh, which was going to be a remake of Resident Evil 2. Capcom shut it down, because they were already remaking Resident Evil 2, but they brought those people who were working on the mod to Capcom to give input. Oh, hmm. that's, that's, really, that's really nice. Maybe Valve should do the same uh, and get the people who made the remake and get them to remake uh, something called Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3 hasn't been made, so how can they remake it? I didn't say remake it. Get the same team you who said did remake the remake. No, no, I you said, said... You said... No, I you said... said roll I back said. the footage. Roll back the footage. You said it, boy. Okay, okay. I'm well, shaking and crying. Sorry, what I meant was, why don't Valve get the people who did the remake of Half-Life 1 to do a Half-Life 3? Because, How about that? Because I think they'd rather do it themselves. I mean, uh... Half-Life Half Alex ain't Half-Life 3. So. Yeah, but it's, I've heard it's really good. I haven't played it yet, though. Uh, I've seen the ending, and you will shit your pants. I'll, yeah, I'll I'm, pro that. I'm probably going to play it later this year when I get a VR headset. I'm really looking forward to it. It looks really good. I want to play it, but I don't have a VR. Yeah, which a lot of people can be complaining about, and, like, I don't get the complaint, to be honest. VR makes me feel sick, so... Yeah, but I don't get the... Like, the only real complaint people seem to have about it is that it's a VR game. In which case, you don't understand Valve. Innovate, that's what they want to do. Innovate. Yeah, like, look at the original Half-Life. The original Half-Life wanted to show... It was like a huge technological leap for PC gaming and showing like how storytelling can be done in a video game. Half-Life 2 showed how physics can be done uh, in a video game. What's the mm -hmm. next big thing? VR. Every mm -hmm. Half-Life game is innovated with a new piece of technology. It's mm, actually pretty great. Somebody predicted... Uh predicted vr half-life like five years ago or something ridiculous like when vr was just like becoming popular oh yeah half-life they... x has been in development since 2015 yeah exactly but uh somebody on like like a, a podcast or something it, it, i don't know it was just a bunch of people that were quite young and one of the guys was like if if half-life ever does come back what they're gonna do is they're gonna do something revolutionary with the current technology and he and he was like he's like vr is coming out right now and i bet they're gonna make a vr half-life game and then the guys th there was a couple of guys that were like wow that's a really cool idea and some people were like ah shut up that's never gonna happen <laughs> and uh here we are with a half-life vr game that's actually um pretty amazing and a uh, little fun fact about the um source 2 engine and half-life alex people are making a g mod 2 uh community made g mod 2 as well as a source filmmaker 2 i um it using half-life alex um i hope they port half-life 2 to source 2 reason being is the loading times in half-life 2 are kind of annoying and i think pointing to source 2 would help with that because otherwise half-life 2 has probably the best pacing i've ever seen in a video game but the loading times can really take away from that yeah and uh, it to source 2 would fix it exactly speaking of uh source 2 and g uh gary's mod um the official twitter account for uh you know gary um the guy behind gary's gary mod, newman yeah gary newman he made a uh tweet a few days ago it was a meme uh kind of teasing in a way of a possible uh gary's mod 2 might so, just be an april fool's joke it might have been but just imagine <laughs> what check a world. the date 
check the date. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that right now. Yeah, that's actually a good point. All right. Uh, while you're doing that, we'll move on to the next question. Next question is for Baggy. Oh, hello. It's uh, your f- impressions on playing on the new PC. Do you have a list of games you're gonna try next? Um. Well, Don't I. Cry. Don't Shut up. Cry. Shut up. Um. Well, I bought a uh, Blood Fresh Supply thanks to Bullet Time Tales. And uh, I like it. My only issue is is um, not knowing where to go half the time. That's an issue of a lot of older games, especially with some of the Hexen uh, games. I've never finished them, despite them being really awesome games, because you have no idea where to go. Yeah, um, that's my only issue, because obviously, if you're just going around in circles, you're going to get bored. So, um, so And it's, it's also a game I wouldn't recommend playing on like long long like on a long time period i'd play in short bursts maybe about like an hour or two um but yeah no uh, i got um uh, blood fresh supply i also got deus ex human revolution uh unfortunately i got the director's cup because for some fucking reason the original version isn't there and yeah that game has some problems which really sucks because i really like human revolution on the xbox um my dad Did has been play playing I will. I will eventually. Um, my dad got me to buy Subnautica Below Zero because he's a massive fan of uh, Subnautica. So am I, but I had no interest in buying uh, Below Zero, but he really wanted it, so I bought it for him. So he, so he uh, plays on um, plays on the PC for about an hour or two uh, before I get back on it. So yeah, no, my PC experience is uh, really good. If you were to ask me if I were to uh, stay on PC... Uh, from now on, mm, no, no, I'll, I'll still be switching between the consoles and all that. Because uh, obviously there are some things, you know. What's the oldest so. console you own? Uh, probably the Wii. I uh, okay. I don't have the GameCube anymore. I have. I still have my PlayStation Two. It's still on my shelf behind me. Funny thing is about the Wii that I own. Um, I've own, I've had that thing since two thousand and six. I've had my PS Two since two thousand. Five, Jesus. Um, then again, I was born. Then again, I was literally like three years old in two thousand five. So you know, yeah. Um, I've had so that yeah, thing for no. fifteen years. Bloody hell. So yeah, my PC experience is really good. Um, all I just need to do is just get a new monitor uh, and get Devil May Cry, and uh, then we're good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to stop until you play it. God damn it! I've told you, man. I bought I, I bought Bayonetta for fuck's sake. I think that should be enough. But then look, again, we but, did I I did buy Bayonetta so that you could tickle Luna's feet. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate it because it shows that you're willing to try out new stuff. Uh, hey, hey, look, I bought Blood Fresh Supply. Okay. Yeah. No, I appreciate it because like sometimes you recommend games to some people and they won't play it because. It, and like the like, I've had some people who are just like not willing to try any games whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And it's really not because they'll be like, "Hey, recommend me some games." You'll recommend them games, and they won't play any of them because they're just like, "Oh no, 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 not playing that." It's yeah. like, "Well, you what? You wanted some games, dickhead." <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking from past experiences. <laughs> You're projecting. <laughs> yeah. No, I've just I, no, I've had some friends in my life who've just like they've said, "Hey, uh, what games do you recommend?" I've recommended them a list of games. And then they say, no, I'm not playing any of those. And I'm just like, what? You you asked for games. You kid. Trouble. Anyway, um, I still need to play Hollow Knight, which Henry's probably still mad at me for not playing it. <sighs> I think <laughs> typing intensifies. I'm, ch- I'm charging up my power. <sighs> I own the game. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've owned it for more than two weeks, actually, so I can't refund it, so I've already given the developers money, so I've still supported them, even if I haven't played it. <laughs> they fucking deserve it. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Probably one of the best games I've ever played, unironically. Well, with quarantine, uh... I might have some time to play it now, who knows? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, the game's tough as nails, so you're gonna get your ass kicked a couple of times. Oh, I love tough games. Why do you think I like DMC? Because it kicks my ass. There you go. Exactly. Um... All right, that's all of Razel uh, MP's que- Oh, wait, that's not all of his questions. He has a bunch more questions. Damn. Question number five for Henry. Oh, boy. How does your preparation for voice acting uh, 
what does your preparation for voice acting look like? Do you do any special training? Yeah, he goes um, on the military course. Okay. <laughs> for <laughs> uh, for kind of special training, um, I mean, I've, ta uh, I've been taking acting courses. Nothing... Uh, Nothing too crazy, but, uh, you know, I plan on taking more courses in the next year or two to kind of help, you know, bring characters to life and get into character and stuff. But when I'm uh, when I'm at home and I'm recording and stuff, I do a lot of warm ups. Um, sometimes it's like just a few lines. Sometimes it's an entire like paragraph. Um, it really depends on what I'm doing. I like to I like to record my lines and listen to them over and over and over again and re-record multiple times. There's never a time where I just record once and then I say, okay, that's that's good. I record at least a handful of times and I listen to kind of what I think is the best. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just really trial and error and um, listening to what other people have to say about the job or the, the hobby or the art. Um, and yeah, I'm just in the meantime. I'm taking classes and talking with uh, with voice actors that have been in video games and stuff, and uh, it's really, really quite uh, quite fun. <laughs> Any names in particular? Um, I so, I I don't want to I don't want to call anybody out because uh, I know some of them are literally not allowed to talk about the project that they're voicing in. <laughs> so any any uh, just just name the game. Um, nothing, nothing super popular, just uh, it, mostly indie game stuff, because... What, it, shout, I, shout out some indie games, then. <laughs> I, ha half of them are, they're not allowed to talk about it yet, so I don't... God I, damn I'd it! Have to, like, I'd have to, like, read through it. <laughs> God damn NDAs. Person. But, um, it's, I try to talk with people who are, um, a little bit above me, not, not, like, people who are, like, Hollywood super star voice actors you know because um it's not super achievable in in the short term like it's nice to listen to professionals obviously and listen to what they have to say because you can learn a lot of stuff from a professional but um as of right now i'm talking with people who who do it as a part-time job or who have voiced in a handful of games because they are kind of my next step like i'm just a level lower than that so when I start talking with those people, they say, oh, I found this job through this person, I use this app, or I use this website, or here is a bunch of references so you can train better or uh, get into character better, here's my method of how I do this, that sort of thing, because it's something you can grasp. Because if you go talk to like a, a superstar uh, voice actor, they'll say, oh, well, you know, I have an agent, I have all this, I have all, all this and that, I have all these contacts, but somebody who's just got a Twitter and is just voicing for the occasional animation and possibly it, game, fan game, um, you can't really grasp that because you don't, you don't have an agent at this time. Like, I mean, you don't, have, you don't have that much to work with, right? So it's very, it can be very limiting. So you need to kind of talk to people who are in a similar pool so you can kind of get a grasp of what the next step is um yeah <laughs> i guess that answers so. i hope that answers the question thank you hey get eric a line back then we're talking boy no get <laughs> helena taylor <laughs> for oh, sake we're gonna we're gonna have a real battle one day me and you i think oh, i God. think both helena and erica would be friends that would be awesome to be honest no because they both seem like genuinely nice people yeah. Honestly, my goal in becoming a voice actor, um, probably my biggest goal, is um, just, like, I, I don't really care about popularity or anything. Um, obviously, I don't don't really care about that. As You know, as long as I can uh, become popular enough so I can DM the Monster Prom devs and they actually respond to my DMs. <laughs> I saw your video about... I saw your video. I saw your Twitter video. I, I saw that, and I'm disturbed. <laughs> no, no, okay, so for reference, um, I was streaming one time, and I was talking about uh, the game, and... Uh, and how somebody hot the Slayer is, yeah. Um... Oh, oh my god. No, somebody was uh, asking about one of the characters, so I DM'd the devs asking about the character, and they never responded to me, so it's become it's become like a, like a reoccurring joke where it's like, will the developers ever respond to me? They always like my tweets, and they, they always respond to my tweets. 
but they never they never respond to my DMs. So I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> I you know what? They're busy people, and they're just trying to they're just trying to get by. You know, they're just trying to make a game. <laughs> what, what, what disappoints me even more is the fact that when I DM'd Helm the Taylor, she never got back to me. <laughs> she left you on red, dude. Oh, that's a red. I, I, I think she's no longer on Twitter anymore because her last tweet was in September. Oh, rip. Hey, you know, maybe, I'm, ju- I'm ju- <laughs> maybe she's gone on ND. Maybe she's gone on like NDA and she can't say anything. They've asked her off Twitter for a bit. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. But uh, okay. Uh, jokes aside, though, uh, don't fucking harass developers. Don't uh, DM voice don't actors. Do that. And don't don't nah, they, don't they, bother they, developers and don't bother I, people who are just trying to do their job. It's uh, yeah. It's I didn't. I just, I just I just I literally just DM'd her and also emailed her saying, "Hey, I'm working on a video about Bayonetta. Since you voiced the character, would you like to?" You know, come on and say anything about it. Answer some questions. Oh no, I wasn't saying I wasn't saying that to you. Oh I yeah, just don't don't like, go and harass voice actors. The, yeah. the, the, as as like a public PSA, just uh, people are just trying to do their job. Voice acting is a job, yeah. um, and game development is a job. You know, I I wouldn't come into a McDonald's asking you know how they make yeah you're like oh what's the secret recipe for your burgers to to somebody who's just trying to do their job. You know, I wouldn't. I'm always fun. We've never given you the the special formula. <laughs> But yeah, uh, respect this. developers. They're just trying to do their job. Um, say this though: if you if you do that shit, your daddy should have pulled out. Oh god. Uh, Simple as. This this is very inappropriate, Baggy. Actually, you know, what? from now on, no more swearing on the podcast. Fuck. Oh, look at you. Oh, that's... You sound like the YouTube out like fucking demonetization. What did I just say? Good shit. I'm shaking. Okay. No, actually, I think no. Actually, I'd love it if, like, for like one episode, we have that challenge where, like, we can't swear, and the second one of us swears, the podcast just ends and the video just cuts off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next time we're gonna do that. Next time we're gonna do it. We're gonna just have a podcast. We have a try best not to swear. If any of us swear, the video just cuts off right there. And just ends. Oh my god. god. That would be hilarious. So it, the video could literally be like five minutes long. <laughs> or oh, say uh, thirty seconds long or five oh, seconds. That- That'd be, no, but we have to try our best not to. But that'd be funny. It's just like, like after about twenty, like fifteen minutes, it just cuts off. Yeah, and that, that's all that gets uploaded. We're gonna do that next time. Next time we're gonna try our best, but for now we can do it. Yeah. Sure. All right. Number question number six from Razzy MP. Thank you, by the way, for your input, Henry. Mm-hmm. Question number six for uh, Senpai Kohai. Fantastic name. I think I think he was trying to say Haruka. I don't know. I think he's referring to me when he says senpai. I'm not your senpai. And if you Fantastic. view me as your senpai, I am deeply concerned. <laughs> I know I have a Japanese name, but that does not mean I am your senpai. Anyway, video games you're going to target after the release of the Doom Eternal video. I'm not going to say. Oof. I do have videos planned. I'm not going to say what they are. Cheeky. One of them is on a Remedy video game, that's all I'll say. I think that's already obvious. Which game is it, though? Guess. I've got to be Quantum Break or Control. Neither. Well, that's the only Remedy game, that's the only new Remedy game that they've made. You've done Matt the Pain 1 and 2. And... What about Death Rally? Death Rally? Yeah, their first game. Never heard of it. Oh yeah, it was their first game. Uh, okay, fair enough. I, I'm just kidding. It's not Death Rally. I'll probably do Death Rally at a later point. It's one of those two. It's either Quantum Break or Control. You make up your minds as to which it is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I've I've made the conscious effort to try my best not to reveal new videos unless it's the Doom Eternal video because people knew I was going to make that before I even decided to make it. Fair enough. Yes, because I feel more motivated when people don't know what I'm working on because I don't feel the constant pressure. Oh, interesting yeah i think it, i think it just works better if you don't announce what you're working on until it's finished because you feel more motivated for it because if you announce something and then you still got work left to do on it you have you still have a lot of pressure put on you from the anticipation and the hype built up from the time when you announced it to when you release it i feel like if you don't announce it until it's done then you don't have to worry about that and also it makes people more excited because it's just like you announce something and it's coming soon so they're more excited for the fact point. Yeah. Obviously, there's some situations where that doesn't really help, but I'd say in most cases, that's what I'm going to try and do. Cool. Anyway, um, so yes, I do have videos planned after the Doom Eternal video. 
Um, I have um, some some Japanese games I'm planning on doing. I have a, a one anime game I'm thinking of doing. Um, go ahead, Maggie. Uh, uh, oh, what are you saying? You were you, I, I was thinking you were going to call me a weeb then, but you didn't. I'm disappointed. Okay. What did you say? I said I was going to talk about an anime game. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't have any anime. I haven't played an anime game. Fucking virgin. Um, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's that's basically all I'll say. I don't really have much to say on this. Um, thank you for asking, Matt. Number seven, horror video games that uh, have had the potential to surpass PT. None. PT is the scariest thing I've ever played. No game has ever come close to it. Nothing, actually, it's the scariest experience in my entire life. Nothing has ever come close to being as scary as PT. Uh, remind me, what's PT again? Silent Hills, the Silent Hills demo from 2014. With oh, the looping okay. corridor. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, there's still stuff that's being found out about it today. And you... D- One sec. Sorry, I had to cough. Um, there's still stuff that's being found out about it today. And you'd think finding out more about it would make it less scary. But no, it's still just as scary, if not more scary. Hmm. The fact that Lisa, the ghost, is always following you. <laughs> that was scary. Anyway, what would you say about it? Does it? Has any horror game you've played come close or surpassed P.T.? I haven't played PT because I've never had a PS4. Fucking virgin! Hey, I've <laughs> never had a PS4, so shut up. It's on PC. So I made an Unreal version of it. Oh. I should I should get on that. Yeah. I can se- I can send you the link actually. I'm gonna send you the link right now. I'll play it. I'll play it on the podcast. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> we'll just listen to your reaction. All right, I'm gonna send it in the Discord. Both of you can use that if you want. There you go. Anyway. We still got a podcast to do, so let's do that first. But yeah, PT is an amazing game. Um, I don't, and not, like even the previous like Silent Hill games, they haven't come close to it. PT is genuinely the scariest thing ever. Interesting. I've played it multiple times. It's super scary, and it's so annoying that it's never going to be made. Um, no, I, I just find it cool. Yeah, I just find it cool, though, how it's it's just a simple demo for a Silent Hill game, yet it's probably the most influential horror game of, like, the last decade. That one demo was enough to influence entire games. Like Layers of Fear, for example. Um, so, yeah, PT... I wish it became a full game with Norman Reedus. <laughs> but then again, we got Death Stranding, so that's fair trade. Norman Reedus, baby fetus. Yeah, I've heard, I've seen a lot of people complain about Death Stranding, but a lot of these complaints are just from the type of game it is, not necessarily because it's bad. Interesting. I, I've seen a lot of people saying like, "Oh, the gameplay is just you walking around." She's like, "Yeah, it's a walking simulator." What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard it's good, but I've also heard it's like kind of wonky. Yeah, but... the story is really stupid. Really. Yeah, I. Uh, I may do a video on Death Stranding when it comes to PC. I don't know. It'd be the longest video ever. It'd be like a 10 hour long video from the amount of stuff in the game. Jeez. I heard, is is this actually true or was this just a rumor? But like, it, there's like hours of cutscenes. There's around eight hours worth of cutscenes. <sighs> it's a 45 hour long game. It, five hour long game? 45 hour long game. 45 oh my god that's just the story the side missions add it up to around 95 Jeez. i'm sorry i thought i was playing a game not a circus no joking <laughs> that's that's no. actually wild though yeah no but like people talk about like there's too many cutscenes in the game there's eight hours worth of cutscenes and like the game is 45 hours long so statistically you're playing more of the game than you are watching it so that argument doesn't really work mm. still though pretty wild yeah I found the gameplay loop in Death Stranding actually to be a lot of fun. But that's just me. And I love Hideo Kojima, so who knows? Maybe I'm biased. Anyway. Um, question number eight. Anime antagonist you like for his background story and motive? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Why are you asking me these questions? I don't watch anime, clearly. Uh, the... uh... Ooh. Oh, I th- think Baggy's got a good answer. 
That's a, this is a difficult one because I have watched anime, obviously, duh, but Weep. the films that I have watched don't necessarily have a bad guy in it. If that makes I'll, sense. I'll just say, I'll just say, um, I'll just say Bethesda. They're, they're the best anime villain, aren't they? Uh, say. I mean, I've watched Cowboy Bebop the movie, but that villain is so forgettable. You take that back right now. I don't like him. I mean, he I, he's not forgettable. I, I don't even remember his name because he's not forgettable. <laughs> For oh, fuck's sake. Um, I yeah, still don't remember his nah, name. I, 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 uh, I Team Rocket, that. final answer. Jesse and James, uh, best anime villains, probably. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have been trying to watch more animes lately. I've been watching... Um, Mostly because of a friend, uh, well, a few friends have been telling me to watch anime, and especially with the whole advent of the, uh, the you know, the lockdown and everything. Um, I've been watching a lot more. I've been watching My Hero Academia, uh, Rise of the Shield Hero, um, fucking bunch of other ones. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are bad, but uh, yeah. That's not really my type of anime. I don't really watch that type of anime. I'm I'm more prefer stuff like uh, Kinyar Mozak, where it's like daily life stuff with just really mm. entertaining characters. I more prefer stuff like that. I've That's been valid. really been meaning to watch uh, B Stars because it's now got an English dub. Oh no! Stay away, Baggy. Why not? I mean, stay. You... Also, the sexual tension is a bit off putting. Watch but... the Japanese version; it's way better. I, I struggle. I struggle reading subtitles. You're an idiot. Uh, I can't oh gosh, help. There's so much aggression. I can't help that. I this is what so I hate, mean. and this is something I love about the director of Parasite. He is entirely right when he came up on the Oscars. He said, subtitles are a one-inch barrier. If you get past it, you will be introduced to so many more interesting things in media. No, no, they no, are a one-inch barrier. Lazy. It's not because I'm lazy. It's because I generally cannot read subtitles. Learn to read. Learn what? to read. Okay, well, it's a I'm one saying, inch barrier. I'm just I'm shaking. Saying, I'm just saying that it's been an issue with me ever since I was five. So I can't... learn to read subtitles, and you'll be introduced to so many much better pieces Eureka, of media. Please. Eureka, your, please, your your worldview will be opened. Please stop, Dad. By, please by by only watching stuff in English, you are limiting yourself. Hey, look, the, hey, look, I've watched some good dumps. So the Cowboy Beat movie was good. Wolf Children was good. Go Who Let Every Time was good. Have you ever seen the movie Old Boy? No, I haven't. I will recommend it to you. Do not watch the dub version. It sucks. Okay, well. Fair enough. It's a great movie. Some of my favorite movies of all time are foreign films that aren't in English. Blue is, Blue is the Warmest Color is my favorite. It's like one of my favorite films. And it's a French film. I mean, I watched Wreck, but that was because I just, want, I just watched it for the visuals, not so much the dialogue. My recommendation, Maggie, would be learn to read subtitles because once you do, the your horizon will be opened. Yeah, like Horizon thing... Zero Dawn. That's a game I gotta play. You know what's a funny thing about Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah. You know, you know what's a funny thing about Horizon Zero Dawn? You can change the title around. You can change any of the three words in like any order, and the title still sounds like the same. <laughs> Zero Horizon Dawn. Dawn Zero Horizon, like it still sounds the same no matter what. The only thing when it comes to subtitles on is just me turning them on for like streams and stuff. That's it. You know, just to help other people, just in case like they can't really hear the game audio that much because obviously I need to speak over the game. Yeah, but that's uh, that's basically my recommendation, Baggy. When it comes to foreign stuff, is like because this is an issue with a lot of people. A lot of people won't watch foreign films simply because they have to read subtitles and because it's in a different language. And that's silly because you're limiting yourself by doing that. There's so I many do great... really want to watch that um what's it called? It's 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 a it's a zombie movie, but it's on a train. Train to Busan. That's it, because a lot of people have been theorizing that it's actually that well, I could be wrong, but some there's a theory going around that it is actually um a sequel or some sort of like spiritual successor to the 28 days later theories are most of the time bullshit so i know but that's what's got me interested into it yeah that would just be my recommendation baggy is just like learn to read subtitles yeah oh hello alfie alfie's just uh, sniffing around in the kitchen do you like the one video of alfie i made on twitter yeah you little shit 
because I, I I panicked when you, when you said when it, when it said uh, oh it's hurting me. I was like no it's not. He loved it. That was that was actually a pain in the ass to make because of the motion tracking. I mean, the last motion tracking I did was when me and the boys were coming to your house. No, the thing the thing is with me because Alfie in that video moves around so much. I had to track every single individual frame. How long did it take you to make that? About an hour. Fuck off. It did. You know that one? I had to like... unsharp it and use his fucking hair as a motion tracker. He's right. You know that one where it's, where it's of where you know like the Jedi Temple march and everything, yeah. Yeah. That only took me about half an hour. Well, then again, the like there isn't like as much like spastic movement as there is with the video with Alfie, where he's constantly moving around. I mean, Anakin moves a lot when he's walking. No, he doesn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, the 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 aggression between you two is. People people of people generally seem to think me and Baggy hate each other. <laughs> I can see why. Which we do, we do. To be fair, we do, but. <laughs> It's like an right. old married couple or like a cartoon duo. It's a love-hate relationship. No, it's just a hate-hate relationship. <laughs> For fuck's sake. All right. Anyway, I've, I've completely forgotten what the original question was, so we're just going to move Something on. about anime. All right. Question number nine. Doom 2005 versus Doom Annihilation. The pros and cons. Uh, pros. The first one Dwayne has the rock in it. Johnson. Ah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> and it has Carl Urban in it. Cons. Everything else. The first-person uh, shooter scene, though. That Sucks. was nice. What, okay, I thought it was. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna fight you to the death over that badger. <laughs> it was like, okay, like when I, when I was watching that film, the whole time I was like, this is literally the worst thing I've ever seen. And then they do the first person scene, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like I, I, it wasn't good by any means, but it was a lot better than half of the film. <laughs> Doom Annihilation, though. Um, I haven't seen it. Pro, pros, at least this time they had the balls to do hell. Cons, everything <laughs> else. Oh, they did do hell. It's not like some zombie virus thing or something. No, it's shit. not like the 2005 movie where it's really dumb and stupid. It's just Why dumb was... and stupid. D D D Doom 2005? Why did they even, like, it's not even Doom at that point. Because it was, it took place on, from what I remember, because I saw it when almost like a, a, like a year after it came out or whatever. Uh, from what I remember, it takes place on Mars. Yep. And there's a zombie, it's not it's not demons there's zombies or, or some super virus or something yep. isn't that what it is why 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 did they even I make the why, film though. i think i know well, why uh, i think hell's a controversial thing and also back in t 2005 to 2012 like zombies were all the craze right so making 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 them zombies as opposed to demons is good for pr but also good for like just viewership in general because people mm -hmm like zombies a lot more than demons during you know what that I find time. funny about that movie though what there were actual two versions of the bfg made um oh both of which worked as in like they vibrated um and dwayne johnson kept both of them <laughs> dude and he still has them he still has them dude okay that's another reason <laughs> that's a that's a benefit of becoming a popular actor he just gets some cool shit no, because he played he played a lot of video games in college, and Doom was one of them. So he was excited to work on the movie. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out well, but he kept the BFG. So good on him. Simple. Fuck, I want a BFG. Um, right to answer uh, Badger's uh, question on the thing, I think the whole reason they did the whole zombie thing is is because don't you technically fight fight zombies Doom Three, which is what the Doom movie is based off, which is Doom Three. You fight them in all the Doom games, yeah, but they're demonically infected zombies. I d what? In the 2005 movie, however, there's no hell, there's no demons, they're just all infected. Are you sure there isn't a demon? Because there's that weird, like, creature thing that lurks around. You got that yeah, weird yeah, that thing. Yeah, in the games, it's like hell. In the movie, they just said, oh, it's just a virus. Oh, so they actually just say, oh, it's a virus. Yeah, yeah it's a virus like... infecting people. Right. There's even a Hell Knight sort of creature in the two. Yeah, they have the movie. Hell Knight from Doom Three there, but, but he's they, not even from Hell. It, yeah, they just make it. Oh, it's a super zombie or something. It's so it's like, fucking what? bizarre. It's, it's so, so dumb. bizarre. It, it, it just really boggles my mind, like do where you know, that idea came from. Do you know how much it costs to make that movie? Oh, probably way too much. Guess how much? It's probably an inflated budget. 
uh, fuck, I don't know. It's a ridiculous amount. I can pretty much guarantee 60 that. million. Jesus. You know another movie that was made for 60 million? Mm, I'm depressed. The Matrix. I'm depressed. And that's an infinitely better movie. <sighs> anyway, done with that question. Yeah, both movies suck. <laughs> All right, next question. We got questions from the hole in my back garden. Do I have a hole in my back garden? Okay. I don't know. All right, question number one. Any games you would consider cult classics? Titanfall 2 comes to mind personally. Yes, Alan Wake. Uh, Natural Selection 2. How long ago was that? Um, let's see. Uh, I want to say 2011, 2012. All right, that works. Yeah. It's just Because the whole thing of cult underrated. classic... Yeah, the cult classic thing, like, it has to, like, have a lukewarm response when it first releases and then gain, a, like, a following later on. So it can't really be anything recent. Alan Wake came out, like, ten years ago. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, shit, that game's ten years old. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, Baggy, what's your answer? Uh, I'd, pro I'd probably say 13, to be honest. Um, two, It was okay. released in 2003, and it was kind of one of the very, very first uh, cell shaded games. Um, it's unique. Um, it's pretty unique. Well, at least from what I know. Before the whole Borderlands thing, it came out in two thousand three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was another game that released in two thousand three that has a cell shaded art style. It wasn't very good though. What was that? It's a little game called DMC two. It's not a very good game, but it had a cell shaded art style for whatever reason. Are you sure? Yeah, it did. Look at it. Okay. Yeah, um, it came out in January 2003, so it released before uh, 13. All right. Yeah, no, um, 13, uh, that's, it's, def it's definitely got a cult following. It's even got a remake coming now, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. And a lot of people don't know that the main uh, character is voiced by David Duchovny from X-Files. Well, he played Fox Mulder. Um, he does, he's not very good in it, though. He's not very good in the game. Question he two. Sounds so disinterested. Okay, it's question two. Question two. Any franchises you would consider to be dead? Fallout was mine personally due to the franchise's integrity being sacrificed for corporate profit with no real care from Bethesda. Franchises I would consider dead. Hmm. That's tough because it's. Wolfenstein. Dead for me as a term implies that it literally has no player base like it is actually an inactive game the game has been shut down um i can't think of any games that are dead dead off the top of my head like they're completely inaccessible oh, well i think he means dead is in like i don't know because like that means different things to different people i know some people consider a franchise dead if it hasn't had a s installment for like five years maybe i'll just say inactive that. Or something like that. I don't know. I guess. I guess in that case, Bayonetta would be a dead franchise because it hasn't had an entry since 2014. Oh, God. <laughs> third, third, third one's on the way, hopefully. Oh, this paint, this hurts me, but uh, I'd say Prey 2017. That's not a franchise. Oh well, it was hopefully going to make a franchise. Hopefully. Hopefully, um, but it's not a franchise. Oh okay. It's well, I mean, one. Is it... So it's one, is... it's right, one game. Okay. Um. Dungeon Keeper. Yeah. Um, it got ruined because the mobile game uh, that came out. And, uh, Splinter Cell. Uh, I mean, they've got a game coming out. When? Uh, they talk, They said that ages ago. Yeah, they said, "Hey, we're going to continue to make more Splinter Cell games." Like ever since, like when Tom Clancy died in 2013, they said they would continue to make more Splinter Cell games in his memory. It's been nearly seven years now and we've not had a splinter cell game since we've had splinter cell related stuff come out though we've had the but they said splinter cell games yeah i know but i'm i'm saying that splinter cell as a franchise isn't actually dead because um of the stuff that's been going on in ghost recon wildlands and... no your solid's dead yeah unfortunately i'm shaking in my little boots yeah even hideo kojima t like said like survive sucked of course he would, because that game just fucking what? Yeah, luckily he worked on Death Stranding instead, which is way better. 
isn't there a rumor going around that um sony or sony wants to buy uh, the metal gear franchise so that kojima can work on it i don't think hideo kojima would ever return to metal gear he said metal gear solid 5 was the last one he's working on right oh well so that's it then like so yeah this is the thing rumors more often than not are false it was a rumor that Sony was going to buy Remedy, but now they're under Epic Games. So, yeah, well, for the next like... two for the next two projects, anyway. Yeah, right. Epic hasn't bought them out; they're just working with Epic as a publisher. Yeah, because I mean, I know Epic Games has kind of become a controversial thing to talk about, but I mean, if if Remedy uh, did get bought out by um, Epic Games, do you think an Alan Wake sequel would be more likely? Mm, I don't think Remedy would do that. Right. I don't think I don't think they would want to be bought out. Microsoft tried to buy them out and they refused. Right. Hmm. Yes. Enough. This is the whole thing. Like, oh yeah, Remedy is being bought out by Sony. Remedy wouldn't want to be bought out. That would completely go against what they want to do as a developer. Right. This is the thing. People make these claims, but they don't understand Remedy or how they work. So, like, I know right off the bat that these claims are false. Mm. So, I mean, some people keep saying, oh, uh, C Project Red would be a good thing for Xbox. I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome, but the thing is, C they're not Project... They're not going to accept that. They're making enough money as is. I know, that's the thing. First of all, they're making enough money as it is. They're impossible. the second most successful developer in Europe. Yeah, and second, what's not to say that Microsoft say, oh, you can't have tits in your games or a lot more violence? Well, Sony are most li- most, mostly like that. Right. Yeah, Microsoft isn't as mu- like that as much. I mean, they have gone with Microsoft for the marketing of the game, though, for Xbox, obviously. I mean, that's good, though. I think it's because um, Capcom have been doing the same thing with their games. It's because Xbox appeals to a more Western audience, and mm. so like games from other countries can appeal more to Western audiences with Xbox. Yeah, true. That's why they promote like DMC Five on Xbox One is because like that promotes to a Western audience. Yeah, true. What, would you say Resident Evil would appeal to a Western audience? Yeah, this is the thing that Capcom needs to... I heard, I think they've realized it now, but this is something I wish they realized back in like the late 2000s when they were trying to make their games appeal more to a Western audience. Their games already appeal to a, the Western market. <laughs> already? Uh, yeah, yeah, Resident Evil and Devil May Cry already appeal to the Western market. Here's a fun fact. One of the live-action advertisements for Resident Evil Two was actually directed by the father of zombies himself, uh, George Romero. Yep. Hmm. And Resident Evil Two is directed by Hideki Kamiya. So you know, just a little history for you there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think they've learned their lesson now. But yeah, just like a lot of like Japanese games appeal to Western gamers anyway. So yeah. I mean, we are all horny fuckers. We like them big boobs and big butts. So there you go. Well, Jill Valentine seems to have reasonably sized boobs in Resident Evil 3 Remake, so... <laughs> I've, have you not... Uh, well, yeah, you have played the remake of uh, number one, but for some reason her boobs, when you move Jill around in the remake of Resident Evil, um, her boobs jiggle. Yeah, the same thing happens in DMC5 when you look oh. at the character models. Oh, God. Because they run on the same engine. Yeah, yeah. Um, the RE engine is really impressive. Like the, like the recent engine like they've been using for all their games looks really amazing. Yeah, it's optimized. But it's really well optimized as well. Yeah, I know, but like, look at like the character models. They look so good. Yeah. Um, I mean, are we going to talk about Resident Evil Three Remake at one point? I haven't played it, so I can't say. I mean, we can talk about little things like cause you... I can talk about the original. I can't really talk about the remake. Well, I mean, you talk to, you talk to me about the whole thing that this doesn't seem to be a lot more gore this time around. Yeah, they've cut down on the gore system for Resident Evil 3 Remake, which is yeah. stupid. Because um, like, I've seen like, the death animations for like obviously when you get killed. Um, before your jugular gets ripped out, uh, the screen just fades to black. Actually, no, Baggy. We're going to stop right here. I realize that the tactics you've just tried to pull on me. Yeah. We're going to stop that right there. All right, moving on to the next question. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I realize you just tried to get me to talk about Resident Evil 3. I'm stopping it right there. I've just noticed your <laughs> tactics. I've just noticed your tactics, boy. I'm stopping it dead in its tracks. We will talk about it. Anyway, franchise I would consider dead. Max Payne, but I'm glad it's dead. Hmm. Max Payne 3 was okay. 
Makes me feel it was shit. Makes me feel it was okay. It was shit. I'm not having this argument, Baggy. I made an hour long video explaining why the game is sucked. I'm not having this. hour long video. <laughs> Fine, I'll make a two hour long video now. You don't help yourself. Yeah, I'm making three hour long videos in Half Life 2, I don't help myself. Fool. Next question. Next question. Um, mainly for No Life. My name's Haruka, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> do you take notes during the writing process for your videos? If so, how do you write out your notes? I do not take notes. Next mm. question. No, I don't take notes. I just write things out how they are, and I redraft my scripts. That's all oh. I do. Okay. If I notice new stuff, I add that new stuff in later. And I said, basically, I don't make... I don't make notes because if I need to like make if I need to like if I'm thinking of like missing like certain stuff I'll go back and look through the footage and like look at like oh did I miss this did I miss that but I just like I don't make it during the game because like that like th the issue is me I would make so many notes during like games like stuff I want to talk about to the point where it would just completely halt the pacing of like my playthrough so I just don't do it. Like with Doom Eternal, there's so many stuff I would make notes about that it would just completely stop my play for a bit dead in its tracks because I'd be stopping every five seconds to make notes. Um, yeah, and that's all I have to say about I don't make notes. Anyway, thank you for that question. Uh, next one is from this one guy named the Noble Wartmaster, and he asks, "Why are you so gay?" <laughs> good to know. Good to know. It's a, yeah, it's a really excellent question. Yeah, why? Why are you so? Gay. I'm not gay. I'm attracted to free females. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm straight. All right. Although I'm attracted to bayonetta, and bayonetta's bisexual, so who knows? Yeah, true. Also, we have a bisexual person on the podcast, anyway. So. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Boy. 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 No, I remember. I remember seeing like a tweet from like. Uh, someone who was like uh like oh I, I i finally got a boyfriend and um and i just i just replied saying go get that dick <laughs> no <laughs> no oh my gosh yeah i, I just like because you know why not they you thought it was funny, can handle else. the truth okay next question comes from ross the photoshop guy graham fantastic guy oh he no. is he now owns the rights to Jeremy Xperia. I created the meme, but he now has ownership of the meme. Fantastic. Question number one. What game characters do you love in the stories you thought were mediocre to bad? Uh, I like Passos hmm. from Max Payne 3. Yeah, he, he was cool. I wish he was the main character because he's actually interesting. Yeah, he was, he was laid back to it. I liked him. Yeah. Any examples for you, Baggy? Baggy? Um, so, side characters? Is that, what, is that what it was about? No. Characters in a video game that has a shit story, but it's a character you love. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, fuck. Uh, I... Uh, Ay ay ay. Uh oh ooh. All right. Um uh, Okay, Resident Evil 6. Is that it's a shit story? Okay. Not a shit game. It's not a shit game. Shush. Uh that's it, Baggy. I challenge so you to a duel. Right? So I challenge you to rock paper scissors hey, right now. Shut up. A side um, character, yeah. No, just any character. Um, okay, so good character in a shit story. Uh, Jake, um, is it Jake Miller or what his name is uh, from Resident Evil Six? Voiced uh, by Ruben Langdon. Yeah, exactly. Um, I liked him to be. I, if anything, I'd say he was possibly the best thing to come out of that entire game. Um, I like the idea that um, Albert Wesker has more of a backstory to him. Yeah, that being oh. He has a son. He has a family somewhere, even though Wesker was an absolute dick. Um, but it was also kind of nice that Jake didn't follow in his father's footsteps. I actually kind of like that. To be honest. Um, 
and it was kind of cool to see both um, children of uh, both uh, William Birkin and uh, Albert Westerker come together to basically uh, finish everything that Umbrella did, you know, so that was really cool. Oh, I was wrong. So, yeah, what? Oh, he wasn't He wasn't voiced by Ruben Langdon. I was wrong. I was thinking of a different character from Resident Evil 5. Lol. <laughs> okay. Um, I think right, so, Henry, do you have any... Um, what was the question exactly again? I just want to run it by my brain one Char more time. Characters from a terrible story that you love. From a terrible story that I love. Okay, yep. so just characters in general. Um, from a terrible story. Uh... <clears throat> I guess Halo 5, people generally consider it a terrible story. <laughs> I, I like the characters in it, though, because obviously, you know, they've got a lot of character development in the other media that uh, they're from. Not in the game uh, itself, though. Not in the game itself. I think that's a pretty good example. Uh, let's see what else. What's a game that has a, what's a thing that has a terrible story? Um, Next Pain 3 is a terrible story. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, um, I can't Halo think of a terrible story. Else. Why? No. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of stuff that has a terrible story, but I really enjoyed. I can't think of any. <sighs> I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'm sure if I sat down for a while, I could think of some things. But uh, just off the top of my head, I can't can't think of anything other right. than uh, other than what I mentioned. All right. Question number two. Then, what game genres do you struggle to get into? None. Uh, sometimes RTS for me. Um, some RTS games I can't get into because they're, there's just too much. Like, I feel like there's only a handful of RTS games that I genuinely enjoy, but sometimes when I play an RTS game, I'm like, it's all right. <laughs> uh, Heresy. I, like, I really do enjoy all genres of games, but there are some that I just prefer more than others. Um, you heretic obviously walking simulators i have a lot of trouble getting into because anything that is meant to kind of waste your time um i feel like i don't really enjoy i can't think of any games off the top of my head that waste my time but games that deliberately pad out um it's playtime with like shitty boring fetch quests and tasks I, I tend to have trouble getting into Grand them. Grand Theft Five. Oh jeez. So, but some games I just have trouble getting into because I feel like when playing them, I could be playing something more entertaining or more worth something more worth my time. Um, because sometimes you know I don't always have the time to play a game, so I want to make sure I get the most out of it. Um really grindy games generally i have trouble getting into pretty pretty self-explanatory um but yeah that's that's about it i'd say i don't really have any issues getting into any genre of games because i've tried to like be as open as possible when playing video games because i feel like locking yourself off from certain genres there's entire genres of games i'm never really a fan of but like for example i'm not really a big fan of side scrollers yet i absolutely love my friend pedro um and that's the thing, I just, because like, if I shut myself off from that genre, I never would have been able to play that game. Uh, and that's the thing with me, is just like, even if it's from a genre I'm generally not a fan of, I'll still play it if it looks interesting enough to me. Mm -hmm. I just try and be as open as possible when it comes to, you know, because there's, there's plenty of games from like different genres I don't really like, but I still love them anyway. Yeah, that's fair. It's always good to keep an open mind, so I, I agree with that. Baggy! Mm-hmm. Any genres you struggle to get into? Hack and slash, you hate all of them. Uh, yeah, hack and slash and simulators. Uh, why, suppose... do you, why do you struggle to get into hack and slash, man? I, they're just not my thing. I'm just any, saying. Any, any reasons in particular? Um, it's just way too fast. Way too fast, in my opinion. Especially okay. when it comes to Devil May Cry. Oh yeah, fair enough. Um, You'd hate Hollow Knight. <laughs> Uh, no, well, to be fair with Devil May Cry, they literally have a turbo mode that if you don't think the game is fast enough, they have a turbo mode that speeds it up by like an extra 20%. <laughs> uh, so I can understand that. I can the understand only that. Devil May Cry game I've played is the shit 2013 game. 
I think you'd enjoy the original Devil May Cry because that's more slow paced. The thing is, the Devil May Cry games, all of them start off relatively slow and then build up the speed afterwards. So by the time you're playing at that super high level, you're already used to it. Uh, you don't, I mean, you know, you don't immediately start off the game doing like a thousand different combos. Fair enough. Yeah, but I can understand that because, like, yeah, they are extremely fast-paced games. Like, you could, you should see the stuff they do in DMC Four. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, why do you struggle with simulators? I mean, farm sim farming simulators just like fucking boring. It's like, who who wants to be fucking on a farm? I, I I get obviously there are people who stuff, but why in a video game? Because it's fun. Okay, well, I don't find it fun, so what's the point? To each their own, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alright, All right, next question. Next question. What games did you warm up to during the past decade and vice versa? So I guess games that I'd, we didn't really like at first, but then warmed up to. Hmm. Um, I guess... DMC reboot. I didn't like it at first, but I've warmed up to it and I enjoy the game play of it. That's about it. That's the only thing I enjoy about it. I hated it at first because a lot of the changes they made, but you know. Um what other ones have I warmed up to? Um Bioshock Infinite. Hey! Didn't like it at first. I've warmed up to it over time. Okay. Uh, whatever ones. Um, Doom 2016. Okay. Yeah. I'd say that's actually the same for me. I At launch, I didn't really enjoy Doom 2016 as much as I thought I would. Because I, I, I like the original classics. Yeah. Uh, but I felt Doom 2016... I can't quite put my finger on it. But it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way i could only play for a short period of time i felt like it really suffered from arena combat where well, it, it would it was mostly inspired by quake which is like is arena true, combat yeah. but it was like every everything boiled down to hallway then a room that you had to clear out then hallway then a room you had to clear out then hallway then a room you had to clear out well that's uh, the structure of quake and they were trying to merge both quake and doom into one thing yeah, and I felt like it was a good game. Like, it wasn't a bad game by any means, but I, I felt like it wasn't quite what I wanted, and Doom Eternal freaking blew that out of the water. Like, it is monumentally better, in my opinion. Um, Same here. Just gunplay and just the enemies and the enemy types. The and also, you have, like, the small puzzles and platforming in between to break exactly, up combat. Exactly, yeah. It really breaks that up because... I felt like every time there was a platforming section, I was almost relieved in a way where it was like, okay, this is this is break time almost from from everything else, and it was really quite nice. It was always I never felt like it was too much. The puzzles and the combat, and even the collectibles, I feel like were a lot more uh, engaging this time around. Mainly because uh, you get to see them, like you get to see how many you collect in the Fortress of Doom. Exactly. Uh, so there's more and, incentive to get them exactly the weapons and the 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 music discs the records um the vinyls the vinyls pardon me yeah. the vinyls you can collect and everything it was really really all felt like you were doing something so it was quite nice and even the codexes i feel like were more robust this time around and gave more context and lore yeah <sighs> so yeah Coffee. um but yeah it was really good yeah it's a good game um, any games you have, Baggy, that you warmed up to? I would say the entirety of the Resident Evil franchise. Um, you didn't I... like Resident Evil? No, no, it wasn't that far. I didn't like them. I was fucking petrified of them. Oh, okay. Because um, the first time I ever saw Resident Evil was with the remake when I was about three years old. And the dickhead relative that I was with at the time um started the game and the first thing i saw was the first zombie uh, eating the fuck out of someone and that is where my hatred for resident evil lasted for years up until 2014 maybe even 2013 when i decided to pick up a copy of resident evil 5 resident evil 5 was your first resident evil right that's it baggy fight me right now but if it wasn't fight me 
if it wasn't for Resident Evil 5, I wouldn't have gone back and played the older games. Bite me right now. And Resident Evil is one of my favorite franchises now up there with Halo. Goodness. For, okay, for so. any people who say Baggy never plays Japanese games, Resident Evil, bitch. Um, okay, so, um, <laughs> quick, quick question. Which, I'm, my memory is totally... Oh, jeez. <laughs> my memory is really fuzzy on this, but which Resident Evil game has that giant lake monster? Resident Evil 4. Thank you. Because I have, like, crippling thalassophobia, and, like, which is, like, fear of open water. Like, not the water itself, but being, like, trapped in, like, the open ocean or, like, scuba diving. I just can't, I can't fucking scuba dive for the life of me. I wouldn't be able to do that. So, like, that part, that segment of the game, fucking, oh, that got me, dude. Especially when I was younger. Fuck. I fucking hated that part. I was and scared I was of stupid. Doors. I was, I literally, like, fucking had a breakdown when I was younger <laughs> because um of this part there's an easter egg where before that fight that uh water creature fight if you shoot the fish it'll the creature will actually come out and kill you so, and i didn't know about that so it fucking jump scared the shit out of me i was at a friend's house and they were like oh shoot the fish shoot the fish and i shot the fish and it fucking came out of the water i had no idea that creature existed so it just i just fucking lost like it got me so bad <laughs> it jump scared the crap out of like young henry it's yeah. wild uh, My I favorite got... Resident Evil will always be the original Resident Evil 2. Fair enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. I love Resident Evil. Resident Evil is so good. Apart from Resident Evil 5 and 6. I'm shaking. I defend Resident Evil 6. Right, Baggy, that's it. Go into the chat right now. We're going to rock, paper, scissors over this, right? Just type out either rock, paper, or scissors. I want to scissor. continue with the fucking podcast. Right, that's it. All right, so that's it. So just just type out any of those three things. And on the count of three, you have to post it, okay? We're going to see who wins rock, paper, scissors, okay? Uh, this is wild. Don't tell me what you're typing. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Three, two, one. Damn it! <laughs> You're kidding me. All right. So it's a draw. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next question. Um, this one's a weird one. What are you guys' three favorite Ross Graham Photoshop edits? Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of them. Uh, and I kind of love them all. To pick one is like picking between children. That's... Jim Xperia is always going to be the one. <laughs> sure. Sure, I'll take that one. That the Jimmy Xperia, the whole thing started because I went on a lot on a uh, live stream with uh, there was a late night game and live stream, and he was doing a live stream with uh, Hidden Xperia, and just out of nowhere, I just posted the thing about Jimmy Xperia sitting on a throne and playing Halo Two, and that's what he did every day of every week of every year for the rest of his life, and he has mental health issues, and they just thought that was weird, and then everyone in the start in the chat just starts making stories about Jimmy Xperia. And so it got, it got so insane that they had to shut down the entire live stream all because the chat just went mental. <laughs> That's how that whole thing started. Damn. It's because I went into... I have a whole video of it on, like, uh, on YouTube, the origin story of Jeremy Xperia, where it is literally the entire chat just going mental over Jeremy Xperia and then Late Night Gaming has to shut down the live stream because the whole chat is going, is going out of control That's fucking about wild. Jeremy Xperia. Actually, I have an answer. Um... Anything with Easy Pete. <laughs> no, my, no. No, that's not okay. That's not okay, my. No, why? My. Why is it not okay? Explain to me why it's not okay. Because I said so. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Baggy, what's your what's your favorite? Uh, the one that he did for my birthday. What did you do for your birthday? Uh, it was basically. Clear a clusterfuck. Let's just say, call it. Let's just say that. All right. Um, Baggy likes gangbangs. No, I don't like gangbangs. You just said you just said it was a clusterfuck, and you liked it. Oh my god. Uh, the, the, the the jummy the the jummy experience stuff, and basically anything Bioshock related. Oh yeah, he has a Bioshock one here. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. Question number five: What pieces of cut content fascinate you three? This is an easy answer. Half-Life 2. 
Yeah, a lot of stuff in Half Life Two. Basically everything and anything in Half Life Two. Bunch Half-Life... of the stuff. So what are you gonna say? Oh, uh, just b- basically anything from the Halo franchise as well. There's so much interesting cut content from Halo. Um, Half Life Two might have the most cut content of any video game ever made. Yeah, basically Half Life Two. If it added all the cut content, it would have been like an entirely different game. Yeah, that's the thing. So, like, um, because for those who don't know, Half Life Two, like the one that was being developed in 2001, was a completely different game than the one that we got in 2004. One hundred percent of the game was cut. Yeah, like they made yeah. an entire game and they just were like, yeah, no, this isn't what we're looking for. No, because they were having constant changes throughout development and a year before the game released, uh, it was leaked and people were like, this game sucks. And even Valve before the leak was like, this game sucks. Like Half-Life 2 sucked a year before it released. And it's interesting how in a sp- in the span of one year, it goes from being a game that sucks ass to being one of the best first-person shooter games ever made. <laughs> it's really bizarre. It's really interesting. Yeah, but like no, because like the th- the interesting thing about it is the hacker leaked out most of the stuff, and that's how we know most of the stuff about Half Life Two that was leaked. But the interesting thing is, he was only able to leak out a fifth of the files before the FBI caught him. Oh my so the gosh. thing is, so the thing is, what we know of Half Life Two right now, it was a completely different game, and there was enough cut content to make like five different games. The interesting thing is, that's potentially only a fifth of what was cut or changed from the game. I didn't know that. I thought it was all leaked. Like, the entire game was leaked. There's some extra stuff that has released in the years, but, like, that's the that's something that fascinates me the most. It's just the stuff that we know about the game that was, like, leaked was potentially only a fifth of the game that was originally being made. Wow. I'm just sad uh, the cremators got cut. They're still considered canon, I believe, but... Yeah, you still... Like, there's still burnt corpses in Half-Life 2, and you see a cremator's head in a jar. Exactly. But so they I'm are still canon, you just never the see them. Yeah, I'm sad. I like them. Yeah. They're probably one of my favorite things from that franchise. Especially with the creepy breathing. God, yeah, that's fucking so cool. Love it. Yeah. Um, but no, like Half-Life 2, like just in general, was going to be a completely different game. It had The story uh, was going to be completely different. It had a very different intro. Um, there's a lot of different characters in it. Um, it looks really interesting. And like, like, to me, it's almost more interesting than the Half-Life 2 that we got, and it might just be because we don't have it, and there's a lot of mystery surrounding it, which makes it more interesting. Like, if we got the original version of Half-Life 2 instead of the version we have now, we might be looking at the original version going like, oh, that's much better than what they were going to do. But, like, there's so many, like, interesting things, like the air exchange chapter that was cut from Half-Life 2, that is, like, possibly one of the coolest, like, levels I've ever seen in a video game, and it's not even in a video game, it's cut. Remind me what that was again? It was basically the whole thing of, like, the Combine were, like, taking the uh, oxygen from Earth and pumping it with, like, different things with the air exchange. And they were going to destroy that, and that was going to lead to the uprising in City 17. Oh my gosh, I I remember that, but I don't remember why I, like, how I forgot about that. Interesting. It's, that's still, that same story build still happens in Half-Life 2 when you destroy the teleporter to uh, Nova Prospect. Um, and that's what starts the uprising in the game. Um, certain ideas were kept, like the whole uh, street war in City 17, that was mostly kept the same. But there's a lot of stuff, especially early game, that was changed. Um, yeah, there were, actually, one of the coolest things, there was, there was going to be a man hack arcade in the game. Um, where, like, people went in and, like, played, like, a man hack game where you try and kill civilians. The interesting thing was that you, you were going to discover later on from Barney that you were controlling real man hacks and that you were killing real people in that game. Jeez. And that was a really cool idea, and it's a shame it got cut. Interesting. The the train ride in the beginning was also going to be a lot longer, but they changed it because they like a lot of people complained about like the long train ride in the first Half Life, and they thought it was better if they just allowed you to explore the city seventeen at your own pace, mm-hmm. which makes sense. I could talk about the Half Life. Like, there's so much cut content in Half Life Two that I could make like a five hour documentary about talking about all of it. Like, it's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna stop right now, because otherwise I'll be here all day talking about it, but yeah. Like, there's so much cut content in Half-Life 2. Um, yeah, uh, whatever, whatever stuff, uh, whatever games have plenty of cut content. Halo 2 had some cut content, because it had a oh, messy yeah. development. Because the yeah. game was basically made in 11 months. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck, I was watch. I watched a mini-documentary on, like, 
just how much of a disaster the game like making the game was oh my god it, it basically for the e3 trailer or whatever they it's in a different um engine engine they, which they, they only made... discovered out a year before the game released that the xbox couldn't handle that engine so they had to remake the whole game in 11 months so. yeah imagine being in that development team and being like yeah we we made that and then being like oh um we have to remake the entire game literally yeah. the entire game like yeah what, what is it with sequels and having messy development half-life 2 messy development halo 2 messy development devil may cry 2 messy development what is it with sequels and having messy developments yeah it's, it's definitely bizarre yeah you know this is this is the thing with halo 2 halo 2 has a lot of problems but at the same time i can't exactly blame bungie because like they had a strict schedule and they couldn't fix a lot of them yeah I don't know. I feel like if they had, if they delayed Halo Two to be like, a, like a year longer and made it a launch title for the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, it would have been a better game. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's a lot of bugs in Halo Two's engine. <laughs> yeah, I never yeah, you can say that again. Any bugs. Yeah. There's a lot of bugs in Halo 2's engine. It's basically held to be, like I think people who modded the engine have basically said it's held together with like toothpicks. Yeah, I I remember it's somebody broken. said that. Somebody who made a, a multiplayer map themselves said something along the lines of it being held together with glue and popsicle sticks or something like that. Like yeah, it's game, it's ridiculous. The game just works. Like it, it barely just, functions. It just it, it's. <laughs> it's the way it was made is it's like from what i understand modding the game is is like a pain in the ass just because of how delicate it is yeah and just how wonky it is it's just doing anything with it it's so finicky and wacky and yeah um other games with cut content uh, doom 3 speaking of modding um i'm gonna get to cut content it's like this is one thing i love about doom 3 doom 3 is one of the most easily moddable games ever Reason being is that it probably has the most organized files of any video game ever made. Really? Yeah, the Doom files are. Yeah, the, all the files in the game are extremely well organized. So if you need to find something and, and you want to modify it for a mod, you can find it super easy. It's like one of the most organized game files I've ever seen. Interesting. I, you know, I've dabbled in mods in the last few years myself. So maybe, maybe at some point I'll jump into that game and see what I can do. Yeah, Doom Three. Doom Three is an awesome game, but um, Doom Three had a bunch of cut content from it as well. The Arachnotron was going to be in Doom Three, and there's actually some <gasps> really. Really, I love. Yeah, that. I, there's, a, there's actually some concept art for it. Once I'll try and find it. Um, it Dude. looked really cool, and I think it's still actually in the game files. I love Arachnotrons. Um. But yeah, it just didn't end up being in the game. Interesting. I was so happy when they announced Arachnotrons in uh, Doom Eternal. Holy shit. There you go. Oh my god, that's actually terrifying. Yeah, that's what it was going to be. It was going to be like 20 feet tall. That's the, Yeah, that's a Spider Mastermind. That's fucking scary, dude. Yeah, that is scary. Scary. Um, yeah. Uh, whatever. Okay, well, yeah. Baggy, do you have any cut content you want to talk about? Um, basic. Um, I know for a fact that I get there was stuff obviously cut from Halo Two, but I hear there was like a lot of stuff cut from Halo Three. Apparently, there's actually going to be a boss oh, yeah. fight uh, between the Grave Mine. That I don't know if that was actually fully developed or not, or that was just an idea that was later scrapped. I if it if it was an idea that would was scrapped, I mean, fuck, I would have loved. I would have loved to fire that bastard. Well, in Halo 2, you might be thinking of Halo 2, because in Halo 2, there's there's a cut mission that happens uh, for Master Chief right after you assassinate the Prophet of, Re um, Prophet of Regret. Um, you know, when you fall into the water and Gravemind grabs you? I know what you're about to, be, to say, yeah. A tank yeah, there's the whole, like yeah, the whole Forerunner tank segment where you go down through forerunner tunnels and the grave man's like trying to hit you with his tentacles i think that may have been what you're talking about but i feel like the whole halo 3 boss fight thing that also sounds like something that might have been i don't think it ever like got past the concept art phase mm. um yeah but... it depends on what development stage you're talking about yeah. right with halo 3 there was actually a game mode that never saw the light of day but there was a few like graphics tests for it and stress tests where there was like big battles with like scarabs and ships and stuff. oh oh 
I I know, I know what it is. Um, this is this has been confirmed, but apparently, um, at one point in development, uh, there was a version of Halo Three where basically, uh, you went around the maps, and throughout the maps there were these like Cortana, um, like messages. You know how like in the game that we got, there's normally just one or two, uh, scripted message. You know throughout the campaign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, apparently, in another version, there was meant to be like several of them, but you had to find them. And how it worked is that basically, if you got near it, your visor would go all funny, um, and it would even go even more funny the closer you got to it. And Cortana would give you a message. Um, but that was kind of obviously because if you think about it, it doesn't really make sense. Because why would there be Cortana messages? all over the place you know there was going to be a scared boss fight in handle reach yeah that too that too yeah true yeah someone actually restored it and it was really cool that's cool um whatever kite content is there in games uh i can think of plenty off the top of my head um oh yeah alan wake alan wake was originally going to be open world yeah because there's a map isn't there in the manual yeah, um, the game was originally going to be open world, but they realized it stopped. It kind of stopped the pacing of the game dead in its tracks if you had to drive to each location individually. Uh, they realized it ca- if they just had Alan drive to the different locations in a cutscene, it keeps the pace of the game flowing. However, because the game was originally going to be open world, multiple areas of the game are loaded into the map, even if they're not used in that episode. For example, you know the dam in episode 5? Mm-hmm. It's loaded into the map in episode 1. Climbing. Yeah, basically the entire like map, even though you only go to certain sections, it's rendered as if it's one big open world map. Well, there are, there are segments in the game where the map really opens up. Yeah, but like the entire game world is like one big map. It's not like different like sections of the map. Even like the New York sections are a part of the map. That would have been so cool though. How does the frame rate not dip despite loading the entire map? I mean, look at um, Grand Theft Auto, you know? Yeah, yeah, but, like, look at, like, fucking Alan Wake. I know, it's... It's I crazy. Mean, yeah. Remedy are really good programmers. I mean, it's still an amazing-looking game, up until the point where you get to the cutscenes where the character models just look weird. The character models look fine, the issues is the facial animations. Yeah, that's it, the facial animations. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, Alan, Alan looks like he's having some PTSD. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I I've always said this like there like you know when um Alan, Alan goes to uh, the cauldron the lake. lake and he and he looks over it look he looks like he's just like witnessed a cow being murdered and the way his eyes just like move to the way he looks back I can he looks like he got help. high on like cocaine it's so fucking funny I know like so, like no I actually want to screenshot that because that that is like so funny. Wait, well, uh, actually, um, I'm on my phone, so I can't. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll send it to you, and then you you post it on, on here. So, Alan Wake, Cauldron Lake. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, there's actually a bunch of like um whatever interesting stuff is cut from uh, some games. Um, yeah, it's. Whatever games have a bunch of cut content. Uh, the original Doom, the the Spider Mastermind was gonna have a magic trick, like do like some, perform some magic on you originally, and there's only one frame of animation that remains in the game files of that before it was cut. I'm wondering, did you watch that from a particular uh, YouTuber? Oh yes, <laughs> I, I did. There we go. I love that guy. He's awesome. Yeah, I love his content. Yeah, Doom has a lot of interesting cut content. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we were just talking about Doom. Um. What other games have uh, interesting cut content? Um, trying to think. Half Life. Oh, don't we talk about Half Life? <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like a lot of games have a lot of interesting cut content, and honestly, I think every game has cut content. Because be it from crunches or from I, no, like every single game has content that's been cut out. Yeah, uh, I think we could talk about it all day about cut content. 
Yeah, and some people ask, like, why do they leave it in the files of the game? Like, why don't they remove it? And it's just like, well, removing all stuff, like, you know, like, sometimes you'll, like, there'll be, like, an extra room in, like, the map that's, like, was supposed to be used for something, but it's still in the map. And some people are like, why didn't they just remove the map? And it's just like, well, it would take extra time to remove it, and it's easy just to leave it in. Because you're, you're never going to see it, so what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some people don't know how game development works. The interesting uh, thing about the interesting thing about this source engine though is that when coding like new stuff, oftentimes coding new stuff into the engine would lead to it creating new rooms just randomly, and that's why there's some random rooms uh, in like Half Life Two just outside the map. It's because like it's there for particular code. That's interesting. Yeah. I um, found. Oh yeah, send it to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Send it in the Discord. What, what is this about? <laughs> Just send the image in the Discord. Okay, I'll check it's it out. Alan, it's I, Alan Wake on crack. I, I gotta send it to you. I gotta no, send, send it. No, send it to the Discord. Send it to the Discord. No, I can't because it's on my phone. Okay. Right, uh, let me send it to you and then you save it and then post it. I hope these are good enough, dude. Okay. There's one. <laughs> oh god, what is this about? <laughs> I'm concerned. I'm worried. <laughs> I can't <even> see <laughs> seen my internet history <laughs> goodness jesus christ Becky, this, should be, this should be like a meme template all right i'm gonna save them alan wake, <laughs> alan, i'm just gonna say that as alan wake cocaine <laughs> right, alan wake you're gonna have to save them into like se uh, separate things though because it's not like in a collage i know don't worry it's fine <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Peggy? This is... I told you, man. Like the the facial expressions are like ass. <laughs> Hope that's something they fix with uh, Alan Wake Two, <laughs> or don't, because it's funny. I'll I'll send them in the Discord now, Henry, as we're talking. But um, put, please put them in the video. No, please. This is wild. All right, so, um. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it to you now, now Henry. Um, well, in the meantime, while we're doing that, I'll get to the next question so that uh, we can move on with this. Uh, anyway, so next question uh, oh my is. Oh, God. It's terrible. Anyway. No, there's more, Henry. Don't worry. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> and this one's the best one. <laughs> That is so. Oh my god. That's so it's, it's kind of creepy. It's yeah. uncanny. It's uncanny valley. He looks like he just saw. His, he just saw Baggy's tweets. Or my tweets. <laughs> or mine. I don't know. I don't know what's. My, mine are the most cursed because I retweet hentai. Um, no, I don't. Oh my gosh. Jeez. All right. Way. Number six. What are your favorite role playing games? Uh, Fallout one Fallout. and two. Yeah, Fallout, Skyrim, uh, fucking, uh, pretty much just your average... Mass Effect? Yeah, exactly. Just pretty much your average role-playing games. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Baggy, do you have any? Uh, Skyrim. Skyrim sucks. <laughs> I mean, no, um, Prey's not an RPG. It's an immersive sim. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, Alright. Wait. Next question is for you specifically, Baggy. Oh. Ooh. Baggy, why is your waifu a woof woof? Uh, oh, this is actually thanks to um oh fucking Zimmy, because actually Zimmy introduced me to uh, Luna. Uh, we were in the Discord, we were exchanging waifus, and he showed me Luna and I was very interested and I asked, Where is this from? And you dumped and Cortana because you're a hoe. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm shaking. Um, it's Waifu Wednesday, so I'll let it pass. 
Um, so I, I mean, never abandoned Bayonetta. I will never abandon my true love. I'm sure you have. You, you just don't want to admit it. Bayonetta has been my wife here since 2010. That's dedication. Wait, so... I'm gonna have a wife in, like, the next few years, and so... I'll still have a fucking, like, poster or something. Baggy. Henry. Yeah. yeah. Don't. Just stick with your waifu. Yeah, remember, I'm, fellas, I only have one waifu, or I will destroy your waifu. I have a husband though, as well. Yes, but yes, Baggy, Bayonetta has been my waifu since 2010. I've never abandoned her. Wow. Oh my goodness, I'm shaking. Because that's when I put, that's when the original uh, that's when the first game released in the UK was like January 2010. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when I first played well, Bayonetta. What a time to be alive. Yeah. Um. So yes. And she is my true love. I will never abandon her. I cuddle her in bed every night, and I. Unfortunately, it, it, my wife does. Hello. I love being around her. Oh, incel vibes. I'm not an incel. I choose not to be a woman. Oh, Henry. Yeah. Henry, the way he's yeah. talking, very incel vibe. I'm just, I'm just I slouched can, in my I, chair I, right I, now. <laughs> Oh, like... I, can hear, uh, I can hear pumped up kicks getting closer like... and closer oh in the background. God. According to Wikipedia, the term incel refers to self identifying members of an online subculture based around the inability to find a romantic sexual partner on the phone. Well, that doesn't describe me because I have had romantic partners in the past. I just don't Wikipedia, want to be. Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit. <laughs> yeah, I know, but still, it does follow that definition. CBT. So that's... Don't, don't worry about it. Cock and ball torture. Like, no! <laughs> oh, I was trying to avoid saying it. <laughs> don't uh, no, Alan Wake here looks like he's witnessing cock and ball torture. <laughs> Dr. Freeman. Cock and ball torture. Or, or cock and ball torture. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen that pain one. or <laughs> application. <laughs> I'm not going to do the fucking thing. Yeah. Application to the penis or testicles. Oh my god, we're fucking five years old. Holy shit. I don't uh, think five year old me was this bad, so. Alright. Yes, um, <laughs> yes, I have been with romantic partners in the past. I have had girlfriends in the past, but I don't want to be with a girlfriend because my last one turned out absolutely horrible. And uh, I have suffer I now suffer from plethantrophobia. Goodness, I'm sorry to hear that. Holy shit. I've never had a girlfriend. And, and I'm I also scared I to get one. And I also now suffer from asymphophobia. What's that? It's the fear of being touched. Oh. Goodness. Which sorry. is funny enough because the character in Death Stranding that Norman Reedus plays has asymphophobia. Oh, right. right. So I, I relate to him a lot. Yes. My relationship, so, my relationship went so badly that I don't want to be in a relationship and I don't like being touched. So when we meet each other eventually, do you just want to dab? No. No hugs. No, no huggy wuggies. No. I didn't say hugs. I said dabs. I said no. dabs. I really don't don't come close to me. Oh, okay. Damn. Oh, sorry to hear that, my bro. Yes. Yeah. Well. Anyway, didn't. Anyway, let's let's move on from sad topics. Um. Oof. Um. But yes, Bayonetta is the best waifu. She will always be the best waifu. I say Luna is the best waifu. You just... Why is Luna better than Bayonetta? Because uh, Luna has powers that. That you don't know about. What powers does she have that Bayonetta does not? Demonic powers. So does Bayonetta. Her entire power set comes from hell. Yeah. And if I ask Luna, I can ask her to turn me into Doomslayer, or better yet, a fucking Marauder. I'm shaking and crying. Um, I'm, Bayonetta I'm could do that as well. She can turn into a panther. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna grab no my coffee. Continue no without me. I'll be yes. Right back. What is it, Becky? You were never one of us. A false idol. I was one of you. I'm just not an idiot who dumps girlfriends. Hey. Anyway, yeah, yeah, so yeah, Bayonetta is better than Luna. I'm tired of having this conversation. I can prove statistically that she is the better waifu. All right, viewers. If any of you are good at drawing. I need you to I need you to do something. <laughs> Draw Luna and Bayonetta brawling it out. Then we'll then we'll decide who's. The, Why don't you do it yourself? You have SFM. I can't. True, but 
An- an- animate Bayonetta and Muna having a fight, and then Bayonetta being the victor, because that's I what would happen. I can't do animations. Are you fucking mad? Bayonetta would beat Luna any day in a fight. Oh, you don't know Luna like I know her. Bayonetta defeated the creator of the universe. Mm-hmm. She's defeated God. She's more powerful than God. Okay. So how is she going? How is Luna going to beat her? Uh, using that uh, summoning Doom Slayer. That's one thing. Bayonetta can summon the most powerful demons in hell. And uh, a, a bunch of other things. And, and also, also Bayonetta and also... has has beat both angels and demons. And also, to quote Arnold Schwarzenegger from uh, Terminator Dark Fate, a relationship isn't physical. There My relationship go. with Bayonetta is very physical. I cuddle her in bed every night. And, uh... uh I, I, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to question you. Well, Bay, is there something wrong with cuddling your waifu? Uh, but, well, uh, um... No, it's just mine doesn't have a pimp. I mean, I could ask Vivsy Pop about it. I could <laughs> ask Hideki Kamiya about it. Uh, why? Why? Because he's the creator of Bayonetta, so. But he didn't create Luna. Yeah, but he created Bayonetta, so I could ask him. Actually, he approves of all the uh, Bayonetta body pillows. All right, all right, friend. Well, he, he he approves of all of it, so he approves of my body pillow. So, the, oh, really? Yes, Hideki Kamiya approves of any body pillows or mouse pads of Bayonetta. Okay then. Yes, he actually wanted uh, at one point to have a mouse of Rodan, the uh, the bartender's head, as like a mouse so you can rub his head while you play. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm 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 wondering if you. If you've sent Viv C Pop some shit saying, Hey, can we get a body pillow of Luna for my mate? No. Oh, good. I uh... asked her if we can get body pillows of Yeah. No one. Cause I wouldn't want body pillows of anyone there, because the no-, no one will ever be as good as Bayonetta. He's biased people. Yeah, because I play fun games, you play shitty games. Oh, so Prey 2017, Resident Evil 2 remake is apparently a shit game. No, you play Halo 2. That's not a shit game. It is. Oh. Mm. I mean, if you want to talk about a shit game, Modern Warfare 2019. You want to talk about a good game? Yeah. Bayonetta. Um, I thought you said you were a fan of uh, Adam Wake, but clearly, uh, clearly that game's not good enough for you. No, clear, it's clearly not good enough. It's not in my top three favorite games of all time. It's clearly not Sorry good enough for that. me, is it? Hello. I'm back. I made myself a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just eating my own dick. That's all the nutrients I need, so. That's, how flexible are you? Uh. Nom nom nom. So I'm, uh, I'll rate this sandwich um, that I just made. Seven um, out of ten, not enough water. I would say seven out of ten. Um, not enough lettuce. But. Well, then put more lettuce in it. I gotta go right. buy more lettuce today. I, okay, um, we're getting I'm... really, we're getting really sidetracked and off topic. I just realized we haven't yeah. answered a single question in ten minutes. Shit. Oh my gosh! Of course, I, I, right. I was like. All right, num- all right, number eight. What franchise should be a kart racer? He provides examples of Bioshock, Electric Bolt Team Racing, and Fallout Team Racing. <laughs> I I would, wait, wait, that would be what? hilarious if Bioshock, like Bioshock, what? Electric Bolt Team Racing. This is the most funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> wait, what franchise should be a racing game or something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I uh, my vote is fucking Halo. I feel like Halo would be same. Mm-hmm. No. As a racing game, fucking Halo, that'd be no, you, hilarious. You know, it'd be a great racing game. Mm. Mario, Mario's never been turned into a racing game, has it? I'm shaking. Baggy, baggy, baggy. 
I said no, it hasn't been turned into a racing game. Oh yeah, yeah, it hasn't. There's never been a racing game with Mario, has there? I think no. they should name it. I think they should name it Mario Kart and spell it with a K. That'd be great. Nintendo, you know, phone me if you want any of my ideas. Maybe this Resident Evil racing game. No. How about a Devil May Cry racing game? How about I'm gonna cry <laughs> racing game? <laughs> uh. How about wait one sec? How about this? This is um, this is a meme I uh, sent to Baggy, and he liked this meme surprisingly. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. Devil may run up on a nigger. Oh, like, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh my god. N word. Hey, 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 hey. So you're on thin ice there, buddy. <laughs> the funny thing is, in my life is strange video, I say the N word. No one cares whatsoever. I make a gay joke. And everyone in the comments complain. I love the double. I love the double standard here. I love how it's it's completely okay for me to say one of the most offensive words in the English language. Yeah, I can't make a joke about gays. You're treading off the ice, buddy. <laughs> I, I I I don't get the, I don't get the double standard here. This is a touchy topic. I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump on this. <laughs> it's a fun, it's a funny meme. It's a funny meme though. <laughs> funny meme. The 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 meme that you just said. Yes, it is funny. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait. So the the initials were, the initials were, would be D M R O A N. Not that nice. <laughs> I didn't say it. Oh <laughs> uh, jeez. Anyway. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they'll make Cry racing. Have Dante just race on like um, on his motorbike, and then just have like, I don't know, fucking Virgil just race on like. I don't fucking know. I haven't I haven't thought this idea out very well, have I? No, you fool. Lady already has a motorcycle, she she can just race on that. Um, with Nico, she has a van, so yeah, you could you could just use them. Just basically, just use any character that has a vehicle. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from Irish Meme Game Boy guy. All right. Nice. Real question: What is entertaining you through the quarantine? Master Bane. Next question: Gonzora, uh, what is the most epic franchise ever? <laughs> what is so, the most epic franchise ever? Did did he possibly, by any stretch of the imagination, send that with a sunglasses? Hold on, emoji? hold on, boys. No. Ah, Gonzora. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, we've yeah, we already explained what's getting us through the quarantine, so we've we've already answered this question anyway. Yeah, that we uh, sort of answered that in the first. Thank you for asking, though. Yeah. Gordon, Gordon Zora, what is the most epic video game franchise ever? That's an easy answer. Team Half -Life. Fortress. <laughs> Half Life. No. Yeah, that's fair. That's... Half Life is probably like the most consistent quality like franchise. Like each game in the series is like really consistent good. Consistent is a powerful word <laughs> for for Half Life. But yeah, no, I know what you. In mean. terms of quality, it's consistent. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Next question comes from Bouncy Ball Studios. Oh. We have a studio following us. This might be a little specific, but did you ever try to play a game in a? choreographed way for example when i was a kid i would play free roaming platforms but i wouldn't play in the areas in the game in a specific order if i messed up in some way i would start all over i don't know what you mean by this yeah no uh i kind of understand what he's getting at um like where you play a game in a specific way uh, sort of like not necessarily to how to how the game wants it yeah I, I i totally respect that like i play i definitely play games in certain ways and i sometimes like to challenge myself even though there is no challenge or like play levels in a specific order or way or do a certain thing in a certain way i i see what you mean and yeah i've done that before um mm. in just about any game uh i like to do i i think i understand what you're asking and uh it's it's a good question and yeah especially in like platforming games i like to kind of f f overly challenge myself sometimes to kind of go out of my way to make it more difficult and kind of see how far i can go or if i do it in a certain way or order um 
see if I can pull it off, that sort of thing. Yeah, just don't check Discord. Um... <laughs> I, uh... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um... No, I don't re usually do that. Alright, so we got one final question. Good. <laughs> ooh, ooh. It's from Office of Naval Intelligence. Oh, heck yeah. All right, all right. Thanks for like Shout out to Office of Naval Intelligence for liking like all my tweets. Really appreciate that, by the way. Thank you. Especially especially the wa shitty waifu ones that I make. They, uh, they like it, and I appreciate that. Thank you for your support, and you are always appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> That's just a little, little note to my boy there. <laughs> but, he asks, are any of y'all heretics? Um, I, I, asked, so. I asked to what, and he says, I don't know. So I replied with a dab. Good. Uh, no, I'd say I'm not a heretic. <laughs> it depends on what you ask. Baggy, ask me something. Okay. Um, are you gay? No. Okay. So I'm a heretic then. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What is this podcast? Hell. No. But it's a I'm sure hell, hell would be where... more... I'm sure hell would be preferable. But it's a hell where angel dust and loon don't exist. Well, that's 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 actually good. Angel Dust is a sweetheart, man. How fucking dare you? He's a shaking. He's a dickhead. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's got a good dick, but he ain't a dickhead. Have you seen his dick? How big is it? <laughs> Tell me, Baggy, how long is it? <laughs> how thick is it? How big? That was the sound of how... every last little bit of the will that I've had. <laughs> Holding on. That just left my body. I, I have no reason to live anymore. That... And, and, and it wasn't even that much. I didn't even have that much will to begin with. But it's gone now. <laughs> I've got nothing else to lose. Well, Henry, I can Holy go. I, 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 can, I can do even better than that. My will to live is negative. It's not zero. It's negative. It's like it's like the whole thing with like... It's negative uh, too. Gandhi and civilization where like his... That stat was... It, it was in the negatives so he could like launch nukes early game. Is that what I, no, what I love about Doom 3 is that sometimes in Doom 3 you can die so hard that like your health bar will read like negative 40 health or like negative 99 health. That's how hard you die is that you didn't just lose... You, your health bar didn't just drop down to zero. You dropped I, lower. I love how we've completely avoided the question. I won't say because just, it's confidential <laughs> but I will say... It's, a, it's an absolute treat. Put me out of my misery. Oh my god. Take me out in the fucking alleyway and shoot me. <laughs> a and shotgun's plus, not gonna do it. Get a plus, fucking F plus, Vulcan or like an M134 minigun I'll, or something. I'll, ha I'll, have, I'll have I don't have to do pay. some high kicks. <laughs> Turn me into like a fine pay. red mist. <laughs> Madam, please suplex me into the ground, shattering every bone in my body, and then. Uh, as I lay battered and broken, please pick me up and allow me to drink from your life-given blossoms like the wailing infant I am. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, Angel says... Why, why are uh, you loud says... Why are you loud? Because I got close. <laughs> 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 <I, laughs> Henry just leaves! Yeah. <laughs> I, was re I, was reading a, I was reading a tweet, by the way, Henry. That was a tweet I saw. As I was saying... Um, I don't I have to pay. It? I don't have to pay. No. I don't have to pay. I don't have to pay either. Well, that's because pay, Angel pay, treats me like a god. Um, Baggy, his... no, that's not an appropriate tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Baggy, he treat... no. He treats me like a god. Baggy, no. Oh! <laughs> All right, I'm done, boys. We're not um, going to have Baggy on the next episode of the podcast. The next episode. Bam, 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 next episode, bam, bam, it will just be me and Henry. Actually, no, Henry's no longer here. Oh, he died. No, here. <laughs> no, you're dead. Uh, you're dead, mate. Oh, pardon me. Okay, good. So, um, 
on this is the thing is that like we try and have a good podcast yet every single time it gets derailed by me and baggy constantly trying to kill each other i feel like that's part of the fun uh, I, I won't stop wow. trying to kill baggy until he plays dmc oh, wait, see. oh my god imagine imagine a, a disabled guy fighting a non-disabled guy <laughs> I imagine the the way the fight would go down. What just... happened with Logan Paul and KSI? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, I mean, I would say Logan's the disabled one. Yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Logan. Hey, I don't. Hey. To, to be fair, I don't actually know about either of them. So if they actually are, I'm very sorry. No, I, then I it. retract my joke. Hey, okay. hey, this joke is coming from someone who actually has a disability so before all you people in the comments start going oh my god you can't say a thing like that shut up <laughs> shut up i don't appreciate the way you're talking to my fans oh my god no 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 your fans are love but i'm talking about randomers randomers baggy this is a christian podcast we do not use that type of language Jesus will not forgive you for your sins. Jesus like, handed me weed, dude. No, he didn't. I'm just, yeah, he did. He came, Jesus does he not down, approve of drugs. He came down from the heavens. He started quoting uh, Jim Carrey uh, quotes, and what? he then gave me a, 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 a spliff. I'm joking. <laughs> Alrighty then. Are we done? Well, you just admitted to smoking weed, and smoking weed in the UK is illegal, so I'm going to send the police to your door now. Um, Wait, oh, if you can send uh, some Peg and Nick Frost, uh, just make sure Nick Frost doesn't bust down my, my back door fence, because that shit costs a lot of money. No, I'll make sure he does that. Oh my goodness. It's not your village anymore! <laughs> What's the matter? Never taken a shortcut before. Um, anyway, I think we've answered every question. Yeah. Have we? Uh, I think we have. I mean, uh, unless you want to talk about Resident Evil 3, but then again, I'll talk about another. All right, Sorry. yeah, let's talk about Resident Evil 3. So Resident Evil 3 is a game that released in 1999. Um, it was made, it was published by Capcom. Um, and it has no. Jill Valentine no. as the main character. The point is, is that you, like... You, you made a very good point about how people are making the whole point like, oh, it's too short for a $60 game. But then you made a very good point. I didn't pay $60 for it. I paid, like, how much was it when I first bought the game? No, no, no. I'm talking about the remake, for God's sake. Remake? You, what? You said that the criticism that people are making of a make is too short. But then you made a tweet that was very good. And saying There's a remake that, of it. Oh, Henry. I never knew about this. Henry. Mm. Can you um, can you whack him into reality, please? Can you slap him? I I do not possess that ability, but that was my I... dick you slapped. That's rough. Why are you That's talking about your dick, you fucking weird? That I'm not talking about my dick. He slapped my thigh. <laughs> okay. No, seriously though. Didn't like... you know my dick is on my thigh? I thought the thighs were on the side. Yes. So it grow. Do you know what? Oh, fuck it. Um, I'm not even gonna bother. Look, this my is po- the podcast, are you gonna... and gentlemen? Wait, why I'm are you still ask... listening? Yeah, yeah, why are you still listening? Right, are we wrap. We'll wrap up in a second. Okay, what do you want to say about Resident Evil Free Remake? I, I want to talk about that critic that tweet that you made that was really good about how why you don't. It wasn't understand. a really good tweet. I don't make good tweets. So you're wrong already. Oh, for God's sake. Look, I'm asking you, do you want to talk about the fact that, about the criticism where, oh, it's too People short. People are saying Resident Evil 3 Remake is too short, despite the fact that every Resident Evil game is short, and the entire game is designed around playing the game different ways and playing the game as fast as possible. So the whole criticism of it being short doesn't make sense, cons- since that's the way Resident Evil 3 and every Resident Evil game is designed. It's designed to be as replayable as possible, which is why it is short. Another criticism that people are making is that it's too action orientated when the original Resident Evil 3 was action orientated and the entire series has been uh, going more into the action genre ever since the original Resident Evil 2. So it's unfair to make that criticism considering it's a remake of that game. So what did you expect playing a remake of a game that's action focused? Right. Henry, what do you make of this? 
I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you don't, you're going to Dante this. Okay, sure. I'm going to be neutral. I'm like that uh, faction in Futurama that's completely neutral. They're like, I am neither for or against this. I... <laughs> I am not gonna. S I'm not gonna join in this. I'm not part of this. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna sit this one out. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, I finished Resident Evil Two remake in about eight or ten. Hours, but then again, that was the first time I played it. So, you know. You yeah, the game that. is short on replay, which it's yeah. meant to be. Yeah. So, I I think that obviously I think. The obvious reason why it's sixty dollars is because they have that shit multiplayer mode that no one asks for. Like, well, no one people, asks for. People defining the sixty dollars by the game's length as stupid. Replay I mean, value is more important than how long the game is, because yeah, a game might be short, but if you can replay it multiple times, then you're getting your money's worth. So that's a dumb criticism not to mention um there could be possibly dlc like they did with the remake you know well we're not going well that doesn't shouldn't count towards the 60 dollars no but at least that means there will be a form of replay i i i, I, sh I bet you a hundred pounds that they're gonna put that mercenary mode as like a free dlc because isn't that what the original resident evil 3 had was the mercenary mode yeah so I think you find that is possibly going to be the next DLC. Yeah, but no, I've heard, I've heard this criticism made about a bunch of games like being like too short, and like I can understand when a game doesn't have enough content to justify the sixty dollars, but a game being too short, like what is too short for a game? What would you consider a game being too short? Two hours. What if it's a highly replayable game that you can replay over and over and over again? Fair. Enough. I think. It I think a great example of that would be the first Risk of Rain game. There's uh there's like six levels or eight levels or something like that. It's a small it's not a huge amount of levels. And the whole game is you survive as long as you can and you try to get to the final level and defeat the final boss. But when you die, you just go back to the start of the game. And each playthrough you unlock you can unlock new items and new playable characters. But an average playthrough from level one to the final level is only about an hour and a half max. But there's different there's different difficulties, different playable characters and different Someone has stuff. done a speed run for Doom Eternal where he beat the game in thirty one minutes. Jesus. Glitchless or with glitches? With glitches because it's an any percent speed run. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, a lot of people complain about that in speedruns, like people using glitches. If it's an any percent speedrun, then it's permitted. Because any percent speedruns is basically just the person trying to beat the game from opening cutscene to closing credits as quickly as possible, so glitches are allowed in any percent speedruns. If it's not any percent, then glitches aren't allowed. Okay. Mm. That's basically how it works. That's uh, interesting. One of my like like a lot of my favorite games are really short. Like Max Payne Two, for example, that's a game that can be completed in three hours. But it's a game that is highly replayable, and it has a gameplay loop that is so much fun. You'll want to replay the game multiple times over. I've replayed Max Payne Two like multiple times in the same day. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, yeah, it's a short game, but you can replay it so many times over because it's so much fun. It's like I like or even like the Portal games, like Portal One and Portal Two are really short. Portal One can be completed in like. 45 minutes interesting if you're quick enough but it's just like that game's so much fun so like eh so I feel like that's that's my issue it's just like it's, I'm not saying it's not fair to criticize a game when there isn't enough content to justify the $60 my issue is when like say like a game isn't highly replayable say like a game doesn't have enough like the game itself doesn't have enough value to go back and replay it there isn't much reason to replay it and say that the core gameplay loop isn't fun enough to justify replaying the game then i can understand the whole thing of like the there is enough content in the game but okay. i've played plenty of short games where the game is so much fun that i want to replay it multiple times over and like the game offers different stuff if you replay it multiple times like different costumes different new modes you can try out it's just like if the game offers a bunch of content, then like, why should it matter if the game's short? Mm. It's a it's a dumb criticism criticism, and I'm tired of it being used for games. You know, if a game doesn't have enough content, then just say it doesn't have enough content. Not that it's too short, because the game's length doesn't just that shouldn't determine the content in the game. 
mm. and it doesn't. Which is why I never use it in any of my videos, because it's dumb. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Daddy? Uh, no, not really. I just, uh, I just, what? I, I, I'm just saying that I just don't really understand, you know, the whole criticism of the remake because again, didn't hang on. Didn't some dude finish the RE2 remake in about 32 minutes? Yeah. And it and it was a 60 uh, well, it was a 60 dollar game but it was 50 it was 50 pounds down here. Yeah. Yeah. Um sorry. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I like how a lot of, like I don't, I don't know. I haven't played the game myself, so I can't say, but I can safely say that those two criticisms aren't valid. Hmm. Resident Evil is a game that's designed to be played through as fast as possible. Yeah. That's why they have a timer. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. Like, I've heard things that apparently uh, Nemesis isn't as dynamic as, say, let's say, like, the alien from Alien Isolation. I haven't played the game, so I can't say. I mean, I, when I fought him in the demo, I mean, he, he seemed pretty scripted. But then again, that was the demo, you know? Who knows? Um, a very optimized game there. Here's a question for you, Vaggy. Yeah. Favorite game of yours that's short. Favorite game of my um, Sonic Generations. How long is that game? Uh, estimate is about four hours. Okay, Henry, what's a game you love that's really short? Uh, Risk of Rain, first one. It's how long is it? Uh, it takes anywhere between an hour to two hours to beat. Okay, fair enough. E. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, I don't know. I mean, I just I just wanted to voice my opinion on that because I, like I said, I see it thrown around a lot, not just with Resident Evil, but like a lot of games. And I'll play the game. I'll be like, yeah, the game is short, but it has a lot of replay value. So I like, it's not really a valid criticism. Hmm. Most of the Devil May Cry games are short, but they have a lot of replay value. So, eh. I don't know. Anyway, I think we're done with this podcast. Thank you all for uh, listening. If you want to listen to a better podcast, go watch, go listen to the Noble Core podcast. I don't know if you guys have listened to it. All right. Have you listened to it, Beggy? Um, no, not yet. Get on it immediately. It's much better than this podcast. Go go listen to it. Okay. Um, thanks for listening. Um, I don't know when this podcast is going to release. But yeah. All right. Yeah. Wish me luck, people, because King Thingy is on TV. Are you still working on your Mirror's Edge video? Um, I've added a small amount of thing, but I think I'm going to do myself a little bit of a commentary video on the whole Modern Warfare remaster, uh, because this remaster is possibly the single fucking worst remaster I've ever seen. No, I just saw the three Jingo machine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, in terms of, like, the way it's being handled, not, oh, not the graphics or anything like that. No, I guess the three particular machine. I don't know much about that, so I can't really say anything. They remastered Metal Gear Solid 3 and then put it solely on a pachinko machine. Well, that's fucking just stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. But I will have Max Payne 3 footage though, as, as background. The same. No. Yes. I don't no. think... I don't think... I have PTSD from that game, mate. <laughs> I... Well... You should feel sorry for me because I have PT PTSD from this fucking movie next door, and it's right next to me. So I'm in a much tougher spot than you are. So shut I'm in a up. tougher spot because you won't shut about Max Payne Three. Max Payne Three is good, so shut up. Um, it's not as bad. It's a really bad game. <laughs>